I welcome you this morning to our Holy Eucharist service here at St Dunstan's in Camberwell in Melbourne. A special welcome to people who are joining us this morning by live stream. Our vicar, the Reverend Roberta Hamilton, has recently retired from the parish and my name is Alison Taylor. I'm a member of the clergy retired in this parish and I am taking the service this morning. Our locum, uh, Father Ray McGuinness, comes on the 17th of January. This morning I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people who are the traditional custodians of this land and recognise the strength, resilience and capacity of Aboriginal people in this land. We are required by the COVID-19 regulations to keep an attendance record. We ask that you wear a mask and that you keep a safe distance from people who are not in your household. You can move the chairs closer to people who are from your same household. We begin our service on this, the Feast of the Epiphany by standing to sing our first hymn.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, has been revealed as a light to the nations. Let us bring our weaknesses and infirmities to him, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. us pray. Everlasting God who brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising, fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the nations. Through him who is the true light and the bright morning star, Jesus Christ your Son our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. And his nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. 
Then you shall be see, you shall see and be radiant. Your heart will thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. For the word of the Lord. And Psalm 72. Give the king your judgment, O God, and your righteousness to the son of a king, that he may judge your people rightly, and the poor of the land with equity. Let the mountains be laden with peace because of his righteousness, and the hills also with prosperity for his people. May he give justice to the poor among the people, and rescue the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures and while the moon gives light throughout all generations. May he come down like rain upon the new mown fields and as showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish and abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. All kings will fall down before him, and all nations do him service. He will deliver the needy when they cry, and the poor that have no helper. He will pity the helpless and the needy, and will save the lives of the poor. He will redeem them from oppression, and their blood shall be precious in his sight. Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his start at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. <coughs> When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
for the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, the Feast of the Church Year, when we hear about the three wise men and how it is that in the baby Jesus they see the mystery and awe and glory of God revealed. We find this story in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, which we've just heard read. It's a story with a star and mystery and secret plans and a momentous meeting. We learn that the wise men come from lands to the east of Jerusalem and they're led by a star seeking the child that they had come to believe was born of the Jews. When they get to Jerusalem, they ask around where they might find this child and they even have, as we heard, a secret audience with King Herod who is, not surprisingly, alarmed at the possibility of a rival for his throne. In the event the wise men find where the star that they have been following stops. They enter a house right there. There they see the child Jesus with Mary his mother and kneel down and pay him homage. That is, they worship him. They give him three gifts. The first of gold, fitting for a king to receive, and then frankincense, associated with temple worship and especially with the priests of Israel, and myrrh, traditionally used to prepare a body for burial. The three gifts signify who Jesus is and foretell his mission to live and die for all humankind. These wise men were seekers after wisdom, always on the lookout for signs and portents and ultimately for someone to worship in their lives and in Jesus they found him. After this, they leave for their own country, avoiding King Herod. The legend in the early church was that in time the wise men became followers of the adult Jesus Christ and were martyred for their faith. St Matthew's Gospel doesn't say how many wise men there were, if we notice, just that there were three gifts. But over time the popular view was formed that there were three wise men and they were given names. Melchior, Caspar and Balthazar. Their bones were said to have been laid to rest in Constantinople after their martyrdom, then later moved to Milan and eventually to Cologne Cathedral. Today in that cathedral, their reliquies, that is the ornate caskets for their supposed remains, are viewed by millions of tourists each year. And I think there is a fascination with the wise men. So who were they, really? In the original Greek of the New Testament, the word used for them is madroi. And the term wise men is a very broad translation for Magi because the Magi were not just any wise men, they were a specific group of people. 
The word magi has also been translated as kings, which is incorrect, and astrologers, which is partly correct, but confusing because of the modern connotations of that word. Other Bible translations don't translate the word magi. They just call them magi because they can't find another modern word close enough in meaning. And we also refer to them as the magi or the magi also at times. The magi were in fact a caste, a hereditary caste of very high-ranking advisors on political and religious matters, advisors to the rulers of the Median and the Persian empires, which are roughly equivalent to modern countries of Iran and Iraq. So they were well to the east of Rome, well to the east of all of Palestine. They were wealthy and held positions of privilege at court. In Roman times, the Magi forged powerful alliances to keep a degree of autonomy for their empires in relation to the Roman Empire. They were renowned through the ancient world for their power, their learning, and their independence their insistence on uh, what they understood to be the truth and they were certainly uh, not going to be browbeaten by King Herod. We should also remember that astrology was the area of learning in the ancient world that would be closest to what we would today call an empirical science. It had elements of mathematics, and astronomy and psychology. So these men, powerful and learned, used their learning, their knowledge of the stars and of geography to find their way to Jesus Christ. They remind me of all those eminent scientists of our own time, especially physicists, who say that their research only confirms for them the existence of God and strengthens for them their Christian faith. In the church, the Magi have come to represent the peoples of all the world who are given a glimpse of who Jesus Christ really is uh, as they pay homage to him in that house uh, in far away Palestine. They're sometimes contrasted with the shepherds who were poor and lowly and who lived nearby. The magi were rich and powerful and learned and lived far away. And within those two uh, contrasting groups of people who saw Jesus Christ as a baby for who he really was, uh, we can find ourselves two contrasting groups of people. We call today the Feast of the Epiphany. And Epiphany is a Greek word meaning appearance or coming to light. The Greeks use this word for the dawning of a new day, the Epiphany of the day. And also for when a God who was usually invisible shows himself to humans in a visible form. And in the early church, the visit of the Magi to Jesus came gradually to be known as the Epiphany. It was the closest word that the early church could find for what had happened at this visit of the Magi to the baby Jesus with his mother. It celebrates the revealing of Jesus as God, not just a baby, but as God to the Magi and to all humankind. A showing forth of God's glory in the world. In the Eastern Church, the Orthodox Church, this day is still the most important feast 
surrounding the birth of Jesus, more important than Christmas Day. And in our Anglican Church, the Feast of the Epiphany marks the end of the 12 days of the Christmas season and the start of the season of Epiphany, which lasts till the 2nd of February. In this season of Epiphany, we celebrate three other epiphanies of Jesus Christ recorded in the Gospels, when the fact that he was God, the second person of the Trinity, was revealed to the world. And these epiphanies are the baptism of our Lord, which is next Sunday, then the occasion when Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding at Cana, which is on the Sunday after that, and then on the 2nd of February, the presentation of the infant Jesus in the temple in Jerusalem. So the, these are the four epiphanies of the church's season of the epiphany. And these glimpses of who Jesus is kind of set us up for the beginning of the long uh, journey from Jesus gathering his disciples together to teaching and travelling and healing uh, through Palestine to uh, coming to Jerusalem to his um, trial, his passion, his death and his resurrection. At the, we've kind of had a beginning, at the beginning we've had a glimpse of who Jesus really is and then it is shown in various ways right through again to Easter Day. If we turn again to our wise men, we know that the gifts that they gave Jesus were the costliest substances of the ancient world, as well as deeply significant. They also give of themselves, because they are paying homage they are worshipping Jesus. Do they receive anything in return? Well, it seems they received wisdom, the knowledge um, of understanding people's motives because they certainly suss out King Herod and his designs and avoid him. Did they make it back to their homes? Did they return some years later, as the legends have it? Whether they did or not, through their encounter with the baby Jesus and his mother, they have come to know what divinity means here on earth. They've come to know and to see light and truth in the incarnation in Jesus. They have come to understand who he truly is. They have come to be able to see God at that moment. The wise men can give us a model of what we should give priority to in our lives. Notice that they don't just come to see Jesus, they come to worship him. And this is what church is for. This is why we come to church. We come to worship God. It's an opportunity for us each week to show our love and devotion to God. It is a time each week to delight in who God is our obedience to God, our thankfulness for his love and his sacrifice for all humankind. And we do this by our presence, our singing, our silence, our listening, our prayer, and by participating in the Holy Communion. It's about setting aside the cares of the week and glorying in the Sabbath 
which is also a gift of God, meant for us to rediscover every seven days who we most deeply are. This is what is involved for us in worship. This is what the wise men did and this is what we do. And like the wise men, we give of ourselves to God and to those for whom he cares, other people. We give from our time and our talents and our resources, just as the wise men gave of themselves and their treasure. All of this is involved in the true worship of God. I wish you a happy and holy epiphany. The Lord be with you. Now follow you. Let us affirm the faith of the Church in the words of our Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Please be seated. Uh, the response to the bidding response is uh, God of signs and wonders. And then hear our prayer. Lift up your eyes and look around. See the glory of God revealed. God of signs and wonders. Hear our prayer. You reveal yourself to the world and the heavens announce your coming. Open your eyes to find you today in the wonders of your creation and in all who work for the preservation of your beautiful world. God of signs and wonders, hear our prayer. You reveal yourself to the world, and kings bow in adoration before a baby. Open our eyes to find you today in the weak and vulnerable people of the world, and in all who choose to set aside pomp and privilege. God of signs and wonders, Hear our prayer. You reveal yourself to the world and the Gentiles become heirs to your mystery. Today we pray for the church, we pray for the Episcopal Anglican Province of Alexandria, the ministry with the Aboriginal people of Australia, Bishop Chris McLeod, the National Aboriginal Bishop, Aboriginal clergy and people, Carangal St Lawrence Community Services, St Peter's Bandura, Jobby John, Yarraville Anglican Parish and the Confirmation Service with Bishop Kate Proud. Open our eyes to find you today in those outside your church and in all who work to break down barriers of exclusion. 
God of signs and wonders, year out. You reveal yourself to the world and the sick are healed, the sad are comforted. We pray today for those who've asked for our prayers. Marion, John, Keith, Bev, Anna, James, Darren, Jasmine, Joshua, Charmian, Greg, Helen, Andrew, Dawn and Lila and any others known in our hearts. Open our eyes to find you today in those who suffer in body, mind or spirit and in all who seek to alleviate the pain of others. God of signs and wonders, hear us. You reveal yourself to the world and we share in the promise of your glory. Open our eyes to find you today that we may neither carelessly miss nor willfully ignore your presence among us. Today we remember those anniversaries that have fallen in this season. We remember Grace Colquhoun, Edith Heyman, Eileen Thornton, Albert Glasson Williams, Nancy Gregory, Joan Dennis, Patricia Purser, Adam Seed, Audrey Johnson, and Russell Hayden. May we, like the sages of old, read the signs of your coming, follow your light, and be drawn to adoration in your presence. God of signs and wonders, hear it now. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Remaining in our places, we uh, give a smile and a little bow or a wave.
God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. To lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give our, our thanks, thanks and, praise. and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. You anointed him as Messiah, the light of the nations, and revealed him as the hope of all who thirst for righteousness and peace. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. <laughs> this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. has taught us we are confident to pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one one bread. sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please remain in your places for communion. Remain standing until you have received communion. I will come and distribute it from the back towards the front.
let us pray. God of the nations, we thank you for nourishing us with this holy sacrament. Guide us by your presence that we may bring your light to those who dwell in darkness and establish your justice in the earth. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Amen. This week we've been reminded again of the importance of COVID-19 regulations as a community. After the service ends, please move outside, either waiting until you've listened to the postlude or immediately, but not staying within the church to have a conversation. You may use either the main door or the Lady Chapel door and I will be out in the cloisters to greet you. Leave your chair where it is. Uh, there's no need to stack it and the team will come and clean them also. Because of COVID-19 restrictions, we're not able to hand around the collection plate at the offertory. There is a collection plate on the back table if you would like to make an offering. It is best not to applaud after the postlude as it is a part of the liturgy and not a performance. A reminder that there is no Thursday 11am Eucharist service till February. And Olive, it is a week late, but we wish you a very happy 98th birthday and we're going to sing you Happy birthday. <laughs> notices that they want to draw to our attention. Then I invite everybody to stand for our final hymn.
May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest to you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.